Pere mai, kaki mai, haere mai. Draw closer, come on board, welcome. These are the precious words spoken and gifted to me by the grandmothers of three Fano or family ancestral lines of the Waitaha people of Aotearoa, New Zealand, as I prepared for this presentation. They have opened the pathway for us today to learn as we weave our knowledge together into one. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko takitimu toku waka, ko aoraki toku maunga, ko waimakareri toku awa, ko waitaha toku iwi, ko nga tahu nati mamoe toku hapu, ko James Leder rawa ko Mary Wehekori oku tupuna, ko Bruce McKeegan rawa ko Beverly McKeegan oku matua, ko Joanne McKeegan toku ingoa. Hello, hello, hello to many. Takitimu is my boat or canoe. Mount Cook is my mountain. The Waimakariri is my river. Waitaha is my iwi. My tahu and Ngati Mamoya are my sub-tribes. James and Mary are my ancestors. Bruce and Beverly are my parents. And I am Joanne McKeegan. As Māori, we always begin by acknowledging how we came to New Zealand or Aotearoa. Our mountain, our river, our ancestors and our family so we can place ourselves and others can place and connect us to our world. We can then respect and connect to what is important to us and remember who we are and why we're here. And then lastly we say who we are. Today in our time together I'll be sharing a story of not only hope but how we can remind and reclaim our wider education system by remembering who we are and remembering the purpose of teaching and learning. All learners have the right to know who they are, how they fit into the world, and how they can contribute to humanity with their unique gifts and talents. Contributive learning is all about adding to other people's lives and the world by making things better in small ways and in big ones. I'm so excited that you have chosen to join me today. The world needs more courageous people who hear that karanga or the call. For me, meaning and fulfillment is now the new wealth and contribution is really the only way to earn it. The beautiful music that you have been listening to has been created by the Waitaha Tonga Poru K Pururu Collective, Kiki Panomu. The song is Hawaiki Kine Nui, and the musicians Gabriel Kalkot and Jerome K Kavanagh, and the music video was directed and filmed by Richie Mills. Just wanted you to enjoy the awakening moments that we had together. So now you know where we're from, let's begin our journey together by thinking about where are we in the world right now with education? Where are we in the world right now in the education space? For me, I think we're in a bit of a crisis. The word crisis seems to be everywhere. Health is in crisis, there's a pandemic. The environment's in crisis, we have global warming. It seems to be the news is flooded with the word crisis. It's everywhere. It seems to be persisting through everything we're talking about and it seems to not be going away in a hurry. If we think about our youth at the moment, we know that 40% of young people identify as having low levels of social and emotional well-being. We know that young people are increasingly reporting a quarter-life crisis if they even get to that stage. They're talking about disappointments, they're talking about loneliness, they're talking about not, able, not being able to connect with each other. We're talking about the cost of mental health that's going on around the world. That's phenomenal, that's going it's crazy. It seems to me that we're getting at a stage where it's escalating exponentially. We seem to have 70% of young people learning skills that people are talking about are going to be redundant by 2030, even if we're going to be needing them by then. And it seems to me that we're teaching kids the same sorts of things that we've been teaching them for a long time. People who are probably listening to me now, you're probably not doing that, but it seems that there's a lot of the world that is. So why is that? I think sometimes we have to come to a point where we all realise that this is a sign of madness and that the trajectory that we're going on just isn't going to get us anywhere and that we are and that we seem to be wasting human potential. Too many students are not getting what they need from school. It's as simple as that. And whether it's because the students, they were told they were never going to succeed academically, or it's the students who were succeeding academically, but they're not getting their well-being needs met. There seems to be kids in both camps. But guess what? It's not just the students. It's the adults too. It's the educators. Educators seem to be struggling. And we hear the word burnout. We hear the word, I can't take it anymore. It's as though there's some sort of deficit in the adults. But I don't actually agree with that. It's not about their ethos. It's not about their attitude because most teachers and educators I know actually love kids. They want to be in the job that they're doing and they really want to get it right. 
So to me, it seems to be about this moral dissonance or this moral injury that I talk a little bit about. And it's because what we've been doing is things that we've been asked to be doing, the things that have been what we know are wrong. And when that happens, it causes this kind of dissonance inside of us. And it's incorrect for us to assume that that's the teacher's fault. So for me, it's a really around not giving up on our kids, not giving up on our teachers, but really trying to figure out how do we get to the stage where well-being needs are met by us all. And that's when we start to think about what do we do when crisis reigns? Sometimes we have to get to the bottom of the barrel to really figure it out. And I kind of feel like we're right there right now. Do we keep doing the same thing? Do we duck for cover? Do we hope somebody else deals with it? I have a saying, it's called no one is coming. Sounds pretty rough, but actually nobody is coming. We are responsible for the change ourselves. We can do it. I know we can. Humans can do it. We can help everybody remember who they are. We have the knowledge. If we listen to ourselves and we remember who we are, we know we can do this. We can pull ourselves out of this crisis. And what do we need to do to truly succeed? Because I know as humans that we just want to understand who we are. We want to develop the knowledge about the world that really makes sense to us, not stuff that we don't need, not stuff that makes no sense to us. We want to collaborate. We want to be together. We want to communicate. We want to think critically about stuff that makes sense. We want to be creative if we're given a chance. It's totally sensible when we get the opportunity and we love doing it. We love to create when we're given an opportunity and we feel safe to do so. And I know that we want to connect with others around us and that when we connect, we have moments of absolute gloriousness and it's just fantastic. And then we all can add to the world in our own unique ways. There's not one person who I've ever met that couldn't add something to our world when we give them a chance. So it's possible to do it. And for me, when I've been working with systems around the globe, I figured out that there's a four things that seem to be really consistent. People want to know who they are. They want to understand the world around them and they want to contribute. And that's, that's talking about self-understanding, knowing ourselves. And that's what I did at the beginning. I showed you a little bit about who I am. The next one for me is around knowledge, knowing what it is you need to know, not having a whole curriculum stuffed into your head or stuffed into your body about stuff that's not really relevant, but knowledge for you to be your very, very best person. Competencies. What are the competencies you need to learn and return back to humanity? What do you need to know about how you work and how you can return? And then connection. How do you connect to yourself? How do you connect to your community? How do you connect to your family? How do you connect to what your purpose is? And how do we teach kids how to do that? Not just through technology, but with each other as human beings and with technology as well. So it boils down to these things. And when we put all of those things together and we start to contribute, and that's why I talk about the contributive curriculum, we start to be able to add to the world. Because for me, when we have contributive learning, it develops those self-understanding. It develops connection. It develops knowledge. And it develops competencies. And when we put it all together, we can add to the world. And for me, that leads to well-being, meaning, and fulfillment. And guess what, guys? Meaning and fulfillment is the new wealth. Money is not the new wealth anymore. Positions is not what we're looking for. And this is what kids have taught me. This is what my people have taught me. It's not the whole search for the holy grail to have positions or anything anymore because that's the answer, is having success with each other and having that comfortableness around meaning and fulfillment. And guess what? Contribution is the only way to earn it. So I'm asking if you will join me on this journey. So I'm saying to you, piri mai, kaki mai, haere mai. I really want you to come with me. It's new. It's a little bit different. But guess what? It works because we're doing it together. And it's for our kids. It's for our community. It's for ourselves. It's for everyone. So let's dive into the outcomes that we really want to have together and figure out who are our learners and what do they really need. And let's be brave enough to give it to them. So I figured out by working through the sort of last 10 years or so, figuring out what are those elements that we need. So I've talked a little bit about the four elements at the beginning, the contributive learning outcomes of self-understanding, knowledge, competency and connection. And I'll dive into a little bit of those and just give you a little taste of those, but we'll go into a little bit more in the workshop. But the there are dimensions around those and let's describe them. They're going to look different for each person, but they do have some similar themes, no matter where we are in the world. Identity understanding who we are as individuals. We're all different, but we need to know who we are. Otherwise, how do we connect? Place, how do we fit into the world? Who am I and where do I fit amongst my people, the wider world, my community, 
capacity. What's our potential for learning? Do we know how we learn? Do we want to learn? Do we know where to go to learn? And then purpose. Do we understand how we can contribute? Do we have that fullness of life and learning about that? The dimensions of connection are around interpersonal. Can I connect with the people that I know and interact with? And the environment, can I connect with the land? Can I connect with the environment? Because that's part of who we are. We're not separate from it, we are connected to it. And I think that was clearly articulated in my beautiful opening, and I was so lucky to be able to share that with you. Conceptual, are we connecting with our learning? Do we know what it means? Has it got any value and purpose to us? And then the beautiful one of universal, are we able to connect with all of humanity in the world? Because that's important for each and every one of us to be able to do. And we can't forget the, the dimensions of knowledge because curriculum is also important. It's very hard for us to think deeply about nothing. Knowledge is really important and it's the integration of the additional outcomes that I'm talking about into the curriculum so that students can have an opportunity to learn everything that they need to learn, not just the content, because content has to be able to be brought to life. And to me, it gets brought to life by the competencies. When we're creative, when we can collaborate, when we can communicate, when we can think about things, not just plod and do because we're told to, but think about why would we do it and how would we do it that way. And then the final one for me around the competencies is around commitment. Can we commit to make something happen? Can we make it happen? Can we learn and return to the earth and to the people around us? So have we got it what it takes to do all of those four things? So those are the outcomes that I sort of talk about. But then to be able to do that, we need to have a different way of talking to our teachers and teaching our teachers and being together as adults and figuring this out. So I talk about modules five to 10 or the elements of five to 10 being around professional learning experiences. Asking teachers to do this kind of teaching without changing the way we support them is kind of like a sad sign of madness. It's a bit like asking a teacher who teaches maths to teach English without giving them any change of support. We know that that doesn't work like that. So let's get real and let's think about how we can do this. So the first one is number five. I think about cultural well-being. We have to help people develop self-understanding, cultivate new ways of new knowledge, foster competency, make connections. And that helps us to lift people up and we don't bring people down. We do this together. We don't subtract, we're gonna to add to the world. And that way we can stand up to crisis every day with contribution. People often ask me, what's the best education system around the world? How do you measure it? What's the ways of knowing? And I look back at them directly in the eye and I say to them, I now look at the best education system as how do they deal, how do their adults deal with the crisis that's going on in the world right now? How do they deal with a whole lot of situations that are happening? How do they deal with their economy? Those are the measures of real success. And how's their cultural well-being and how do they look after each other as human beings? So those are the sorts of things we're talking about. And in this work, we can work together to create that cultural well-being within your classroom, within your school, within your community. It's not just inside your classroom that goes beyond that, much, much bigger than that, because this is about our learning and our world now. So what are the capabilities our teachers need to have to be able to do this? a little bit different than what they were before. In the olden days, we used to be able to deliver learning. Now we partner, now we engage, now we develop, now we understand each other, and now we celebrate. Because learning is about learning and returning to the earth, so we have to be able to think about it in kind of a different way. The next part is about contributive inquiry, and this is kind of what I think is one of the most important processes for this kind of teaching and contributive inquiry. Because we're asking and framing questions, and sometimes I've been known to say, I never teach kids something I already know the answer to. That's kind of tough, but the bottom line is, is that if we teach stuff we already know, we're actually not helping them to be innovative, we're not helping them to be creative, we're not helping them to help us figure out the solutions for the world that we need right now. So then we want to investigate. How do we investigate? There are skills that we need to teach as we go. It's not just free for all, but it's what are the skills we need to teach as we go to investigate. But after we know who the kids are, kids are, so that they enjoy what they're doing, so that they get excited by what they're doing. So they're not just bored to tears sitting there learning about something that has no relevancy to it. But the third and final piece around the contributive inquiry is, is it improving somebody's life? Is it making a difference? Are we having a change of outcome because of it? Has it made a difference for somebody else? And then when I'm starting to think about contributive inquiry, again, I'm thinking assessment. 
a massive part of an inquiry process is assessment. And we'll take you through the process of authentic mixed method assessment. How to integrate social and emotional elements self as, such as self-understanding, connection and competency into academic learning. It is not a separate piece. We must do this together. I've talked a lot about the fact in a recent paper that I've just written that, that you know, we can't fit students into an academic system that doesn't meet their needs, that describes success in a different way from who they are. What we're wanting to do is to provide assessment that teaches kids what they need to learn next, not to tell them that they're good or bad, but what do they need to learn next on their journey of learning, just like we're on our journey of our own lives as well. We want our kids to know whether or not what they're learning is helping them to be a better learner, not as a judge, but as a guide and giving our direction to where they want to go next. Then we have a process called collaborative moderation. And it's an amazing professional learning experience because you get to work with people from all over the world and talk about why do you think this works? Why do you think this is? What do you think that piece of learning looks like? And it's about exploring a piece of directly, direct assessment that other people have been able to do as well. And just have a look at their embedded pedagogical practices and learning and see if there's a development across indiv individual students' learning. After spending some time working with students, you can have a look at what they've been created you can have a look at their physical assessments. You can have a look at their learning journal. You might have a look at the descriptions of effective medical, I'm sorry, effective pedagogical practice. You might look at their ratings. You might look at their student progressions. But what we're really looking for here is has learning occurred and why it occurred so that we can learn together. And it's absolutely critical for spreading the best practice and identifying what works to improve student outcomes. Collaborative moderation is one of the most exciting events that we can have when we're learning together because it's teacher to teacher, kanohi to kanohi, face to face, that we're learning together about how to do this work. The other way that I start to work through this whole process of contributive learning is that we work together in what I call change teams. You don't have to use the word change teams. Some people just cannot stand the word change anymore, and fair enough, because some of us are just over the word change. But what I talk about is a community to commitment to contributive learning. Who needs to be on your team to make this happen? Some places you might have religious people on your team. Some places you might have business people. The people you have to have on your team are your kids, your parents, and your teachers, and your people in your school and your community. I also talk about let's get out of our schools and go and work in the community and solve the real problems of the world. Let's get out of the books. Let's get into real life. But let's get the people who are doing the work together to be the ones who are really the most important people who should be there with us. A commitment to changing what we're doing so that our kids get the best deal that they need. That will lead us to that meaning and fulfillment that we're talking about. And module 10 really takes us through the place where we can really reflect, have we achieved meaning and fulfillment? Have we gone past that whole idea of wealth is me, 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 to the fact of meaning and fulfillment becomes we, that our whole world is about we, and the fact that we have to work together as a team to make sure we're all going to be okay and we're all going to survive this next piece of life. Meaning and fulfillment becomes the new wealth for us altogether. So the work that we have will provide you with a wealth of tools every single step of the way. We have what you need to make this happen. It's a lot of different descriptions, but we have ways and means of doing it. And guess what? It works. We have kids who want to come back to school now. We have kids who actually turn up to school with joy and love in their hearts because they want to see what's going to happen next with their learning, and they are in charge of it. Talk about student agency, it's agency when they have a say around their learning and they don't get stopped. They don't get stopped with their own learning, they get to do what they want to do. And But guess what, there's something even more exciting which I want to share with you. Teachers want to come to school as well, and they don't want to leave. They want to stay because they want to be a part of this excitement as well. Because contributive learning is about changing the world and changing the way we live and being a part of an exciting place to live. And the other part is, is that, as a, side, as a side note, academic levels go up as well. Now I say that as a side note because that's not my main point of interest. I know some people will be screaming at me saying that's the most important thing. But for me, the most important thing is that kids are getting what they need to be themselves. They're getting what they need to know who they are. They're getting what they need to be their best person. They're getting what they need to connect and getting the knowledge they need. And if the academic levels are going up too, that's exactly what I need as well. But my most important thing is that they are knowing themselves and connecting with themselves and being their very best person. So let's just do a little bit of a recap. What does it mean 
when we give meaning and fulfillment. We contribute, we make it happen. What is contrib contribution? It means we're adding to other people's lives. We're making things better in small ways and in big ways. We're not sitting back waiting and being told to do something. We're doing something proactively. And what helps us contribute? We can't contribute if we don't know who we are. We sometimes forget, but let's remind ourselves who we are. Let's be proud of who we are. Let's be proud of who we come from. Let's be proud of who we are. And then let's connect to each other. Let's tell each other who we are. Let's be honest about it and let's not be shy about it. And then let's find the knowledge we each need so that we can each contribute our very best skills to this earth and this world. And then let's find the competencies that we need to learn and return and make this place a better place to live in. In the workshop, I'm going to run through the dimensions of self-understanding and we're really going to focus on identity. At the beginning, I talked a little bit about what my identity was because when I know myself and when I was brave enough to tell people who I am, I was able to stand tall. I was able to do tangata and be proud of myself and to tell people where I'm from, who I am, and I'm proud to be me. And when I can do that, then I can talk with any child in the world and I can help them to do the same thing. And I want that for you as well. I want you to join me on this journey. I want you to be able to do that too. I want you to sit here and have the same confidence that I've got being able to say this with you as well. I want you to know your place in the world. I want you to feel that you've got the capacity to know that you can progress and be successful too. And that you've got the ability to contribute to the lives of every kid that you touch. We've got the tools that will help you. We've got self-understanding learning progressions. You can have a look at these. We'll give you a copy of these. Look at what they can teach you to do. I want you to know what makes you special and unique and what makes you grow as a person every day. I want you to explore these progressions and describe the new success, not the old success, where every child can show you what they know in their way, and that's what's going to give us equity. Nothing more and nothing less. So let's join us on the contributive, contributive learning journey where we talk about contribution, where we get meaning and fulfillment and our purpose picture is changing. Please join Adam Collis from Catalyst and myself in the workshop where we will take, we will take a look at the first element of self-understanding. You'll take away a whole resource on how to do this for yourself first and then for your kids. But before we do that, please enjoy the rest of the music. Please just take a moment for you. Kakitiya.